Good afternoon. Yes, we're live. Yes. Okay. Welcome to my daily broadcast. This is episode 451. And the topic today is you trust others the more than you trust yourself. And here's why. Yes, I'm going to predict some things. Well, we'll see where that goes. So before I get to that, let me introduce myself and get you up to speed so you know where we are and then we'll continue from there. Uh, welcome to my broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And every day I do these talks on Facebook Live. Yes, it starts on Facebook Live. It does end up on YouTube and then onto my podcast in case you're listening there or watching there. Called Messages from the Masculine. Let me try that one again. Messages from the Masculine to inspire the feminine heart. And today's episode in the ongoing series is episode 451 and the topic today is you trust others more than you trust yourself and here's why this may upset you a bit I should warn you ahead of time um, what I'm going to speak to and speak about is has different layers to it I'll put it that way and then we'll see where this goes and, and ideally <laughs> based upon my trust of these talks since they're not scripted or planned I will get you to a place where you'll understand what you're doing, what you can do differently and how you can have what you want. Because that's kind of my goal in these talks. It's not to scare you or upset you or piss you off, although that does happen, but it's to actually inspire and awaken you to what's possible. This topic, as always, come from, came from a conversation earlier today, although sometimes they come from reading something, some part of the posts, a download, an inspiration, and a process of my own, whatever that is. But today, it came from a conversation I was having earlier when I was at, um, at my spiritual center. And so I want to speak to that a little bit because it provokes something inside of me about why people don't trust themselves. And part of it's tied to the conversation I had yesterday about self-love because it is so much about how we don't trust ourselves because we don't necessarily love ourselves and value ourselves. And I'm going to get into that, I know. But also because we've been so um, convinced and influenced by outside entities I use that word, and I don't mean that spiritually speaking. I'm talking about entities like advertising companies and marketing people and people who bully and people who push. Those sort of entities, not not um, ethereal things. That's a whole other conversation, which I'm not getting into. So, we've been raised in a culture, and I, I guess I'm really just to speak to the Western world because that's where it's predominantly happening, where we've been raised in a culture where we are convinced by outside influencers or influences, well, we've been influenced by influences, that makes sense. We've been influenced, or can, let me leave this way around. We've been convinced by outside influences. That sounds better, because like putting the influence to influence, that was too complicated. To market us that we, you know, um, like Coca-Cola is the real thing, for example, or that, um, you know, have you driven a Ford lately? All these different commercials. I mean, there's there's so many jingles that I could probably pull forward if I already sat down for the last, for the next ten minutes and scoured my mind for the last thirty years. There are so many jingles and catchphrases and slogans from marketing of different products and items in the world that we've been convinced that they know better than we do, and that's part of what's the challenge with our culture is that we've been set ourselves up to be um, blindly trusting other things outside ourselves. Now, that's not all of it. That's part of it, though. The second part of it, though, and this is, brings it closer to home, and it's going to speak to a lot of what we've all been through, I would say the majority of us have been through, in our lives, which is our upbringing. Let me say it this way. Have, were you raised in an environment where you were taught to trust yourself when you were very young? I'm going to say, even though you may be watching this replay, if you're not watching this live, that the answer is probably going to be no. 99% of us were raised, if not more than that, were raised in families where we weren't allowed to trust ourselves very early. We were told what to do, told not to touch this, told to do these other things, and convinced by the big grown-ups around us, those big people, that what they know is right, what they know is true, what they know, what they say is law. And so our role is to listen and follow their example which a lot of us did very well that carries forward so we start running as an adult in our somewhere in the back of our mind <laughs> I don't know which part of the brain it is this inner adult this inner parent this inner 
rule maker that tells us what to do and we become slaves to that voice even though the voice is inside of us it's not somebody else it's inside of us but it was imprinted or implanted at a very young age by our parents usually and it could be a blend of them or it could be also included some teachers or older siblings or grandparents or officials in different structures wherever we might have been that have convinced us about how we can and can't do things and we may not actually hear that voice out loud but we've become perhaps more tentative perhaps more um, reticent to do certain things because we doubt we can do them because we don't trust ourselves because we trust, we've been told by the other voice not to trust ourselves I should say we trust that voice which says no versus trusting ourselves when we think we should say yes so in our <laughs> I'm going to say this in our lives we have this abundance of naysayers both external and internal that convince us what we should do or not do and we don't take choice ourselves because to be honest I'm going to say this and don't really mean it badly but it's true we've come to depend upon them and in some ways we've become lazy because we don't always say I know what I need to do and take charge of that I know for me personally just to be transparent taking the leap of faith to move to another country actually three other countries now I'm just looking back at those two opportunities the first two were okay because they were close but the moving here was not something that was really um, endorsed I guess is the word I use by my parents um, because moving to when I was living in England moving to Germany and to Belgium that was only an hour away and it was only for a short it wasn't it wasn't like giving the rest of my life up well I didn't think so I came out to the States for six months but it, I but it was 7,000 miles away seven 7,000 miles away and basically 11 hour flight and 8 hour time difference that was a bigger leap to move and so I definitely was challenged by that by those around me but I did it anyway it also took a leap of faith for me to, to, to launch into this business because how could I be a relationship coach when I'm single <laughs> I can give you like 17 other reasons why I shouldn't be doing it but I'm doing it anyway because I believe in this I'm passionate about this and it drives me frankly I suspect by now having done 451 Facebook lives about stuff around this conversation I know some shit now <laughs> I'm doing best to impart it and share it and inspire you with it so for me I've had some definite um, leaps of faith growing edge into the unknown and stretching inside my comfort zone to own a new piece of myself and so I guess what I'm saying to you is where in your life are you willing to do that? Where in your life have you done that? Where you stepped into a new place of beingness where you trusted yourself? And this is the key. Or I should say this is the core element of this message I want to make sure you get. The same as yesterday when it was about self-love and, and I'll put the link below at the end of the broadcast of the link to that practice which I highly recommend you get if you want to improve your own love of yourself, support of yourself and appreciation of yourself. Self-trust is another one of these fundamental principles that if you don't... Um, make it a priority you'll remain a slave to outside influences when you learn to trust yourself and when you take back your self-trust because a lot of it isn't necessarily learning as much as it's claiming and owning and building that relationship with yourself then what happens is your um, internal guidance system is very it gets much stronger in a lot of ways it's your intuition or gut instinct all these key pieces of your awareness which are really your own um, barometers of what's right and what's wrong what's good and what's bad those aspects of yourself come to the surface and become very useful but it's kind of like once you trust yourself those things become available because if you don't trust yourself and this is what happens by the way if you don't trust yourself meaning you don't necessarily listen to your own gut instinct your own, intu your own intuition your own inner voice they will shut down or should say they will go, to, they will go um, silent they don't go away they just go silent because until you really start trusting again they won't wake up they won't come forward they won't speak up because you've trained them not to trust not to give you what they have because you don't trust them so self-trust opens a lot of doors and self-trust really indicates or illustrates or reminds you that you're way stronger you're way more powerful and you're way more capable than you thought you were and that's good stuff this is a different um, 
It's part of the same topic in a way, but it's different in another way. I haven't talked about this much before in this conversation, but I want to speak this now because I'm realizing more and more that we as individuals, we as individuals, have room to grow when it comes to trusting ourselves, to honoring and owning our power, our magnificence, our wisdom, and our insights that are always in there. But we've been trained by society and by those around us not to believe them. It's time to remember ourselves. It's time to listen to ourselves. And that, I think, is it. Like self-love, self-trust is practice. Like self-love, self-trust is easy to do because it's inside of you. Like self-love, self-trust is a powerful skill that will change your life. I mentioned I have a a self-love meditation that I offer. I'll put the link in again below in the comments. Um, Self-trust, I'll give you some ideas on what to do. I don't actually have a practice for that yet. Maybe I'll write one. (laughs) But it really comes back to remembering that what you have to say has value. What you have to, what you believe is, can be true. Can be, and always is. Just letting you know that you don't don't deny it, but your self-trust is there. And the third piece is that when you listen inside, when you truly willingly listen to your own gut instincts, your own insights, your own um, wisdom, it will show up. So here's homework. I was thinking about this, but it came up. I want to give you something to practice because I feel if you do this, you actually discover something about yourself you didn't know. And so I'm just I'm creating this on the fly, so bear with me for a second. This is going to help you build trust, self-trust. Okay, this is what I've got. Two things showing up. So I'm going to give you these gifts as your homework, and who knows, this may become a full-blown program because <laughs> things like that do happen. So one thing is, when someone says something to you, really. Um, <laughs> I'm using the analogy of if you're a wine taster and you basically, you taste a wine, you swill it around and spit it out and you'll know how good it is. Same thing's true with people telling you stuff. <laughs> Your homework, one of the things you can do is when people tell you stuff, including what I say about it for that matter, if you listen to people and you hear stuff, comments, statements, declarations, what they believe is the truth, take it in and, and swill it around, energetically speaking. Listen, like, feel inside. Does it feel true to you? Does it line up for you? Because you have an intuition, you have an instinct built in just so you know this, where well, something will go, it'll, it'll, in, in um, auditory terms, it'll ring true or it clunks. Or it'll feel right or it'll feel off. Or you'll see it clearly or it looks muddy. It's kind of, I'm trying to play on all the levels of uh, feeling. When sh- of, of, uh, sorry, of sensory input. So when you get that given to you, you'll be able to take it in and sense if it lines up or if it doesn't. That's your practice. Second thing, for homework, so that's one piece of homework. Second piece of homework is this is going to be journal writing, by the way. So, at the end of the day, you can do it, or at any time of the day you want to. If a question shows up inside, or a desire shows up inside, or you have a thought, or an idea, or an intention, write it down as a question in a journal, and then don't answer it. Yeah, don't answer it. This is a this is a piece that will develop your self trust. Because if you are willing to write down the question and you leave it as a question, this piece of, the piece of psychology is so you know this. Your subconscious mind hates incompletes. And what happens if you do write down this question and leave it out there, it will start searching for an answer. And because you're trusting yourself more, this is what the idea is, you will start to discover answers will show up to answer that question. Now, you may not just have one answer. You may get five answers to that same question. That's fine. But the idea of this is you're going to practice this as you write down in journal questions that you may have or an idea or a thought about want to do something. I'm going to try this out. Or will this work or what do I want to do? Anything like that, write that down and then leave it as a question. Because if it's a statement, like say, um, this looks pretty good. What do I think about it? Could be the question. Like write a question about that if you don't have a question right away. And then leave the question hanging out there for you to respond to. And don't sit with a journal. Just don't think about it. Just put it down and leave it alone. You may notice five minutes later, five hours later, that you'll start getting a thought in the back of your mind, a little yeah, hunch and intuition that answers the question you've had. When that shows up, write it down. And then keep sitting with it. Don't 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 like make that the end. Don't make the end of it. Just sit with it, see if something else shows up. It might, it might not. 
But what I'm intending for you to get is that you'll start to develop this listening ability inside. As I mentioned earlier, that gut feeling, your intuition, your wisdom, the, the, the still small voice, whatever you want to call those pieces inside, have been silent. By journaling and asking questions, you're inviting them to speak. And those parts of you speak truth. So if you are willing to write down the questions, let those parts inside answer. But don't ask them the question, just ask the question openly so that your consciousness is aware of it and it will start searching around for the answers. So try that on for size. That's two, two assignments. If you, have any, if you have any questions about that, please put them below. If you have any, ex, any experiences with this, if you do this and you get results, please put them below too. I appreciate you answering, or sorry, I appreciate you sharing what you learned, what happens for you, because I love to hear. Again, this might become a program, I don't know. I'm just, just throwing this, I'm spitballing this, to be honest, but it feels right, so I'm sharing this. So, again, like self-love, this is the thing you practice. And this could change everything in your life, especially in your relationships, be it social, business, anything. Having this ability to trust yourself in a new way will change the way you relate to everybody else. And that is a good thing. Okay, I think that summarizes it pretty much. Um, recapping, by the way, as I mentioned when I first started, this is a Facebook Live that starts this way, but it goes onto YouTube, YouTube and then also goes into my podcast. How you can find those is on Facebook. I put the Facebook Live onto my business page, on, um, which is barryselby.author. I also put this onto my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby's The Channel, and Messages from the Masculine, Messages from the Masculine, the playlist, and then also goes onto my podcast eventually, which I'm slowly getting over there, but a ways to go. Uh, messages for the Masculine is my podcast. You can subscribe there. So you can subscribe, subscribe to my podcast and to my YouTube channel and follow me on Facebook. Um, you got your homework. And Jermaine, nice to have you here. You have to watch the replay. I just gave out all the homework and the, and the tips and the keys. So um, so that's it. So same time tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time, if you want to watch me live. If you want the replay, that's fine. But um, self-trust is a key. Use it, learn it, develop it, listen to it, and change your life. I'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Take care of yourselves. Bye.